If you have your Bibles, please turn in the Word of God tonight to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, beginning with 169. So we have taught you the olive and the tav, the very first lesson. We're going to go back and pick it up again from that first lesson, but we're going to finish Psalm 119 tonight instead of Sunday morning. So you know what we're doing here, okay? All right, Psalm 119, uh, verse 169, David says this, Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed, say I have longed, longed. for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law, law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. Amen. That's decisions. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. 176 again. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Let's pray. Father, we come before you right now. We ask your blessing to be upon the reading of your holy word. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Thank you for standing. All right, some of you have your papers with you tonight that I gave you on the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, for those of you who don't, if you'll look up here, you'll see the final letter, the 22nd Hebrew letter, is up here on the screen. Okay, far left-hand side from where I'm standing, it's in the shape of the cross. So that's the ancient picture form is the shape of a cross, okay? The ancient pictoform, or the pictograph. Uh, isn't that interesting? Amen. So it's the Tav. All right, in the shape of a cross. Now, the modern form of the letter, you can see it up here or there or on your paper, looks something like this. So the way you would draw it, you would start up here. You would go down like that. You want to leave a little hang over, a little overhang at the top. Come down, and it's going to have a leg. Okay, so that's the modern form of the tav. Amen. So it is the shape of a cross, the modern form of the tav. Now, what does it mean? It means truth and perfection. Amen. 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 Okay. Truth and perfection, the cross, all right, Amen. it speaks of the final destination of man, all right, final destination of man. It also speaks of desire. Desire, amen. So there's a lot in this. Now, when we look at it, important to understand, because it's the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, the 22nd letter, then what you do is you're going to go back in a cycle. So you're going to go from the Tav, because it's the last letter, it's going to take you to the Aleph. Amen. Amen. So that's the way it's, it's, it's meant to set it, be set up that way, okay? Amen. So you're going to go back to the olive from the top in a cycle. Amen. Now, what does the olive speak of? It speaks of God. Amen. It's the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, so it speaks of one God. Hallelujah. The absolute oneness of God. Amen. The olive, the ancient pictoform, if you look up here, you'll see it's in the form of a, the head of a bullock. Amen. So we'll just write ox here. So he is, it's again... Showing you that He is our one God, but He will come as a sacrifice amen, amen. 
on the cross. Amen. So what we're going to have here is the tov, truth and perfection, the cross, final destination, desire. But it's going to be a cycle that takes us back to God. So how do we get back to God? How do we get to the Aleph and the Tav? Well, uh, how do we get to the Aleph? Well, the Tav explains how we get back to, to God because we can't save ourselves. Okay? All right, as we set this up, we're going to give you a few things of understanding here. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 9. Let's take a little time here. Okay, in the ninth chapter, the Bible talks about a company of people that God sent an angel to mark them. And, and God told that angel to mark them. Now what is the mark that is in, that's going to be placed on the people's forehead? It's the Tav. Okay. So this angel goes forth into Israel, Jerusalem, Israel, and, and he begins to mark in the foreheads of those that sigh and cry the symbol of the cross or the Tav. So let's look at the verse here, verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the, land, through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, set a mark, say a mark. a mark. So it also speaks of a mark. Okay? So that is one I needed to add. The Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So then this is a mark upon righteous, the righteous people, the righteous in the land. Okay. Now they are marked with the Tav, but there's also going to be a marking on the unrighteous or the ungodly, and that's a mark of blood. So what God is showing you is the final destination of man. So one group of people are going to have the symbol of the cross. They're going to walk under the symbol of the cross. They're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. They have His righteousness. They live for the Lord. But then you have another company of people. Their final destination is going to be the lake of fire. And the mark upon them is blood or judgment. Okay? So verse 6, it says, Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and began at my sanctuary, then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Okay, so you've got, as the Bible says, there's going to be some that are going to be slain. Correct? Amen. Wow. Really interesting, isn't it? So what we have, though, here, the Bible is telling us there's going to be a mark on the righteous. The ungodly are going to be judged. So there's going to be a mark of blood upon them. And then we have God's protection in verse 6 upon the righteous, upon the godly. That's very important for us to understand. Now, you don't see a symbol of a cross on your forehead. This is symbolism, okay? But when God looks at you, He looks at you through the blood. He looks at you as His child. Amen. 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 He looks at you as righteous based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that do not have the cross in their life, which means they have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, then they are set for judgment. That's their final destination. Amen. So everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Amen. When we look in the Bible as far as the Old Testament is concerned, you have 12 minor prophets, Amen. beginning with Hosea. Amen. I will not go through every prophet. I've got them all written down here. I can tell you what every one of them preaches, what every one teaches. I don't have time to do that tonight, okay? But when you come to this particular letter, the Tav, all 12 minor prophets are going to be under the Hebrew letter Tav. Okay. All 12 of them. Amen. All the way from Hosea to what? Malachi. Malachi. Good. All 12 of them are under that sign of the Tav. Right. Amen. Truth and perfection. So what it will show you as you go through here, and I'm not going to look at every one of them, basically we're going to see is that God is going to bring judgment Amen. upon the nation Israel. He's going to bring judgment upon the world. Following that judgment, there will come a time of restoration. In that time of restoration, you will see that truth will prevail. Amen. Ultimately, truth will prevail. Amen. All right? Amen. All right, let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation 22, the last 
chapter in Revelation, Revelation 22, corresponding with the 22nd Hebrew letter. Because the book of Revelation is laid out according to the Hebrew alphabet. Amen. If you want more details, J.R. Church and Spearman have a book on the hidden mysteries of the menorah. Okay, now watch this. 22. Now, it's interesting here that we, we, we Revelation, but Revelation as the book in the New Testament doesn't have the letter Tav over it. Does that confuse you? So Revelation 22 does, but Revelation... Doesn't have the Hebrew letter Tav on it. Second Peter does. Okay, amen. Now, why does Second Peter have the twenty-second letter in the Hebrew alphabet over it? Because there's five final forms. So when you go from 2 Peter, then you go to the next New Testament book all the way to the end of the book of Revelation, you've got five final forms of the same Hebrew alphabet, which we talked briefly about, which will bring you to the book of Revelation, okay? Amen, amen. Everybody with me? All right. Amen. Revelation 22 then, what, we, what are we going to see? We should see truth prevailing. Yes. Amen. We should see the final destination of man, Hallelujah. if that's true. Correct? Amen. Okay. Amen. So let's look at this in verse 6. 22 and 6. He said unto me, these sayings are faithful and... True. Ah, there it is. Amen. Faithful and true. true. 22nd chapter, 22nd Hebrew letter. And the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Correct? Amen. Look at verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega. That's the Greek letters. First letter in the Greek Alpha. Last letter of the Greek alphabet Omega. Alpha Omega. So he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the Aleph and the Tav at the same time. See, he's not just the olive. He's, he's not just God. He's not just the beginning. He's the ending as well. He's the top. He's truth and perfection. Amen. He's the one that determines the final destination of man. So let's look at it. Verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and uh, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter into, through the gates, into that city. See the final destination. Amen. These are people who have been walking in the truth. They have God in their life. Amen. Because truth leads you to God. Amen. Verse 15. Here's the final destination of some other people. For without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, whosoever loveth and maketh a what? Lie. That's the opposite of truth. Amen. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So I'm just Amen. pointing out these patterns here. Okay, let's go to 2 Peter, please. Amen. When you study 2 Peter, it would be the 22nd book in the New Testament. And what you will find in 2 Peter is false teachers yes, sir. who do not bring the truth. And how God is going to judge false teachers who do not bring the truth. Okay. Amen. Now we keep going here and we see uh, there's coming a day when people are going to scoff at the coming of the Lord. Wow. Wow. Amen. So false teachers are going to be pre presenting false truths. You're going to have people in the earth that are going to mock the preaching or the teaching of the second coming of Jesus to the earth. Amen. Okay. Amen. There'll be scoffers. That is a sign of the last days wow. when people mock uh, the second coming of Jesus. Amen. But we see verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night Amen. in the which the heavens shall pass away the great noise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be? In all holy conversation and godliness, Amen. looking for and hastening into the coming Amen. of the day of God, Amen. wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Amen. Nevertheless, we according to His promise, a promise, promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So we see the final destination of men, right? Amen. 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 Okay, so let's go back here. 
laying that foundation for you based on the pattern in the scripture so you'll understand. Okay, look up here, please. Uh, you will see here the Hebrew. This is an interlinear Bible. So we've got the transliteration of the Hebrew text of Genesis 1 and 1. So there's the Hebrew at the bottom, the transliteration at the top. Now notice it's not in English. It's an actual transliteration from the Hebrew that you're going to see up here. All right? We'll read uh, Genesis 1 in just a moment. But I, want, but I need to show this to you because we've got to lay this groundwork again. All right. In the beginning, God created the heaven, or the heavens and the earth. That's the English. Amen. There's the Hebrew. How many of y'all can read Hebrew? Well, probably by now you're getting pretty close because we've taught you all the letters. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Above that, what you have is Bereshit, the beginning. Bara, created. Elohim, God. Ah. Hashemayim, heavens. Haaretz, earth. Then what are these other letters in there for? Did you catch that? Let me read it again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Up here. You with me? Bereshit, beginning. Bara, created. Elohim, God. Hashemayim, heaven. Haaretz, earth. But you've got some other letters up there that are not in the English. Have you noticed that? Okay, what do you have? Amen. Let me walk over here. Amen. Do you see that right there? The A-T or the et? Amen. That's the Aleph and the Tav. Wow. Amen. Amen. You don't see it in the English Bible, but the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is in the text of that scripture. Wow. And it's untranslatable. Amen. The Aleph and the Tav. Wow. So what God is showing you in the very first verse He's given you some understanding of what's going to happen. Amen. Okay? Amen. Amen. Now the olive and the tav is right there. It. Amen. And it's before what? It's before the heavens and the earth. Amen. Amen. So what we see, Elohim, olive and tav, Hashemayim, Haaretz, heaven and earth. What you see is God is fixing to do something. Amen. Okay? What it shows you is that God, who is the Aleph, He's also the Tav. So the one God of Hashemayim, the heavens, this one God, because one God is before Hashemayim, this Elohim that's in the heavens is going to come down to Haaretz, the earth. Amen. And when He comes, He's going to die on a cross. And this one God that's going to die on the cross because the olive is also means ox or bullock. A bullock was sacrificed. Amen. Right there in the first verse of your Bible, God shows you how He's going to redeem mankind. Amen. Amen. So He put the olive and the toff. This one God will become the ox and He will die on the top, the, top, the cross to redeem mankind. Amen. He encoded that deliberately in His Word to let you know the history of redemption. Hallelujah. Because God is showing you that you cannot save yourself. Okay? So, and also not only that, but the olive and tav is put there because the Jewish scholars say because the Lord used the Hebrew alphabet, the letters, to create. By His Word, He created the heavens and the earth. So the Aleph and the Tav, the letters were used by God to create the perfect heavens and the perfect earth. Eventually, it's not, eventually that will be the reality we're not in yet, correct? Amen. Okay, so praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. So let me go back here and go through this with you again. All right. The Aleph and the Tav in that verse is translated by some rabbis as words since it is the first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. These letters follow after Elohim, and before heavens and earth. So we see God coming to the earth. The olive was originally in the shape of a bullock. On the day of atonement, a bullock was offered. The tav was in the shape of a cross. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Now Revelation 1 and 7 says, When the Lord comes, behold, He cometh with clouds. Every eye shall see Him, and they also which pierced Him. 
and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega. That's the Greek. But the Hebrew would be Olive and Tav. Jesus is the Olive and the Tav. He is the absolute one God. Absolute monotheism. There is no such thing as separate persons in the Godhead. He's absolutely one God. First Hebrew letter of the alphabet. And he is the Tav. He's going to be the one God. One God. Alpha and Omega at the beginning. Saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty. He is the I am that I am. Amen. Amen. Over here he is the Et. Of the Aleph and the Tav in the Hebrew is the Aleph and the Tav. All right, y'all with me so far? Okay. I'm just going back over and covering some past things. Our great God and Savior, the sacrifice, left heaven, came to earth to redeem us, give us strength, and purify us on the cross. Why is that necessary? Because nothing that comes out of man, nothing that comes out of you, is perfect and pure. I'm going to say it again. Nothing that comes out of man is perfect and pure. God is the only one that can say that what comes out of him is perfect and pure or truth and perfection. So hold on to that. So our great God and Savior, the sacrifice left heaven, came to earth to redeem us, give us strength and purify us on the cross. I mean, and that's right there in the first verse of the Bible. Monk says that uh, the Aleph and the Tav is something that is expressed or analyzed in its entirety. It is said to be covered from Aleph to Tav, all right? A to Z. Amen. Okay, amen. amen. So I'm going to go past the Aleph here, go straight to the Tav. The Tav speaks of truth in covenant, speaks of the cross. It speaks of the seal of God. The seal of God is a guarantee that an agreement is firm and will be carried out. Uh, that's page 216 in Monk's writing. The creation depends on this truth. Amen. Amen. Scripture says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. says He is the Alpha and the Omega at the same time. Amen. He is the Olive and the Tav at the same time. Amen. Now here's what the New Testament would say about that. This is Colossians. 1, 13 through 22. Are y'all with me still? Okay. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness? Who did? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. God, come in the flesh to redeem us on the cross, is the one that delivered us. You need to hold on to these things, okay? Because when, a, when we go to 119, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood. Woo, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. What does that mean? That means he as God created. That's a, are you with me right now? Okay. The firstborn of every creature, for by him, by who? Jesus. Well, he has to be God because only God did the creation. For by him. So what do we see? We see the creator God, who is Jesus Christ, is also the same one that's the Tav that redeemed us. For by him were all things created that were in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him, who? Jesus, as God, and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist, and He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence, that means first place. He's not the second person of anything. For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell, pleroma. It's a powerful Greek word. All fullness, the pleroma of God would dwell in him. In who? Jesus. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. There it is. Even going back to the book of Genesis. 
And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So that verse is telling you that he is God the creator and he is also God who came in flesh to redeem us by his blood. It's exactly what the Olive and Tav is teaching you in the book of Genesis, etc. Okay? All right, now we're not going to get into all of that, so I'm going to back up here. Okay, say praise the Lord. Praise so God is good. He's amazing. He's amazing. So go to Psalm 119, please. And let's see how this works out. So we have David crying out. He says, Let, me, let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. So what does David want? He has a desire to come into the presence of God. The problem is he's gone astray. The problem is he needs to be saved. So he, he see, we're going to see it. How do you get back to God? How do you get back to the Aleph in this cycle? There's a work. That is done. So David cries out, come near. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord, and give me understanding according to thy word. What? Word, according to thy truth. David's basically, I want to know what's going on. He has a desire to know what's going on. A lot of people go through life, they don't have any desire to know what's going on. David wants to know what's going on. David has a desire to come near to the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, watch. So it follows in this pattern. Now, how is he going to do that? Only by the Tav, only by the cross. Is he going to be able to approach God as well as us? Okay. So let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee Deliver me according to thy word. So he's lifting up a very strong prayer for God. He wants God. He desires God. He loves God. But at this point, he's gone astray. So how is he going to get back into the presence of God? Now watch. This is why this tov is placed here. He said, my lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. Isn't that amazing? So he said, I'm going to start praising God. And it's not just a simple praise. He says, when you give me understanding of your truth, there's going to be an overflow of praise. It's not just some little praise. It's just going to be like, the Jewish scholar said, it's like a, a, a river flowing out of his mouth of praise unto God. Because he's got a revelation and an understanding that's coming from God. He's got an understanding of the truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, ultimately, he wants to go to a place called truth. There's a place called truth that he desires to go to. And that truth is going to lead him to God. This place called truth. Look at Revelation 22. Look at these other places we've talked about. This place called truth has no lie in it. And in this place called truth, there is no premature death. That's right. Amen. Amen. And that's going to be the final destination of those who walk in truth. Amen? Amen. And so he has this desire, and it's an overflow of praise that's coming out of his mouth Amen. for the truth of God's word. Amen. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all the commandments, for all thy commandments are righteousness. He said, I'm going to tell others about it. He said, I'm going to preach the, the word of God. I'm going to preach the truth to other people. Because he said, I don't want to be the only one that knows it. He said, I want to share Amen. the word of God. Amen. And then he says, let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. Amen. And the hand speaks of another Hebrew letter, right? Amen. Now notice this, okay? This is very interesting. Because the Aleph... When you, when you spell it out, the Aleph, then you got the Mem, and then you got the Tav. 
So the Aleph and the Tav, right? Beginning and ending of the Hebrew alphabet. The middle letter is the Mem. You've got Emet. And that literally means truth. Okay? So he's, he's, he's desiring, he's hungry for the truth. Amen. Now, this is so important. You go see what we're talking about in a, in a moment, okay? Woo, praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to ask you a question before I get too far into this. How many of you still have a desire for truth? Hallelujah. How many of you still have a desire for God? Yes, amen. I'm not talking about you, you came to church tonight. I'm talking about you have a desire for God and desire to hear His Word, a desire to hear His voice. For those of you who responded positively, you will be thankful when I get done. Because it shows the condition of your being. Now watch. So He wants to share it with others. He said, let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation. Amen. He desires salvation. That's his ultimate desire over everything in life. Yes. Is to be in the presence of God. To come back in the presence of God. To be saved. Yes. To be in the world to come. Yes. As he's traveling through this world. Yes. Okay? He knows that truth will ultimately prevail. And this is his desire. Okay, Now watch. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord. And thy law is my delight. See, he delights in the law of God. And then he cries out for life. Let my soul live and it shall praise thee. And let thy decisions help me. Now here's, here's the key right here. He says, I have gone astray. Like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Interesting. So he has strayed away from God. Right, right. And he has the desire to walk in the truth. He had the desire to walk with God. He has a desire to be gathered back into the fold. Amen. Watch, now I want you to hear this. Something has happened in David's life recently, according to the passage. Right. And it can happen to anybody here. Right, sir. And that is straying. We can stray. David, if David can, so can I. But he still has a desire for the shepherd. He still has a desire for God. He has a desire to be saved. He has a desire to be in the world of cup. He has a desire to walk in the truth. He has a desire to live holy before God. But he's, he's honest. He's honest by saying, I've gone astray. So he wants to be restored. He wants to be recovered. He wants to be yes, gathered back into the fold. Yes, That's critical. Yes, now watch. Yes, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant for I do not forget yeah. thy commandments. Yes, David is showing you what you do when you go astray from the truth. Amen. David is showing you what you do when you go away from God and you get away from the fold like a sheep. Right. Now this is important. Number one, you have to have desire. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Number two, you have to be able to hear the voice of the shepherd. Okay, now watch. Now listen. We know David has a desire. And we know this is a recent occurrence. Woo. That he has recently strayed back. And he knows, I believe David knew, that only by the work of the cross, by the blood of Jesus, could he make his way back, okay? Hallelujah. And by truth. Amen. He still has a desire as a stray sheep. Right. <clears throat> Amen. Secondarily, he has the ability to hear the voice of the shepherd. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes, the reason I know this is recent, a recent occurrence in David's life, is because of those two things. Because when a sheep strays from the fold, if a sheep, I'm not going to keep you long, so you got to hear this. If a sheep goes away too long and too far, 
Did you hear me? They will move into a place where they're not recognized the voice of the shepherd. Okay? So David isn't in that place yet because he still has a desire for God. You know in your life, and I know in my life where I am spiritually right now. If we have recently strayed from God, from His truth, from His path, from the fold, from where you should be in God. If it's recent, there's hope for you. Because in that culture, if a sheep strays too far for too long, the shepherd loses hope. Did you hear what I said? Amen. The shepherd loses hope that that sheep will ever be found. The longer it's gone, the farther it goes away, the less the shepherd has a hope that that sheep will be saved. Amen. Amen. You understand? Because number one, the further the sheep gets away and strain from the shepherd. The less they desire to hear the voice of the shepherd. Because they become accustomed to their freedom. You know in your spirit. You may be recently strained from God right now. God's trying to stop you in your tracks. He's trying to show you how to get back. He's trying to show you what to do. He's trying to show you how to come back in the presence of God. He's trying to show you how to be restored. Amen. Amen. And I would say this tonight. If you're here, you haven't gone too far and too long away. Because when you get to a place, you no longer have a desire to hear the voice of the shepherd. That means you've gone too long. And you start enjoying your freedom. You have no desire to be under the authority of the shepherd anymore. You have no desire to be under the security of the shepherd anymore. And it's simply because you've been gone too long, too far. And so the shepherd, at some point, loses hope. And the odds that that sheep can be saved and restored become... Less and less the longer time goes by. Yes, sir. Amen. The longer the sheep is astray. Every day that shepherd gets up, no doubt that shepherd's looking for that lost sheep, has a, de- a desire to see that sheep saved and restored and brought back into his presence. But every day that goes by, he loses a little bit more hope. The odds are stacked against the sheep that that sheep will ever be saved the longer he gets away. Because the sheep at some point will have no desire to hear the voice of the shepherd anymore. Because that sheep will become accustomed to being free. And sheep love to be free. Right, right, Pastor, amen. Hallelujah. Not only do they, just, they lose the, the, the ability to hear the voice of the shepherd. Amen. Amen. They also lose the desire right. Woo. Right. to be in fellowship with the shepherd. Right. So I can tell you where you are and I can tell you where I am tonight. Yeah. And the good news, if you're here, you haven't gone too far too long. Yeah. Because, listen... Because when you cross over that line and you enjoy your freedom and you don't want to be under the authority of a shepherd anymore or you don't want to hear the voice of a shepherd anymore, when you cross that line, the odds are stacked against you that you will ever be recovered or ever be restored. And so because David, the Bible tells us he has a desire for God. He has a desire for the shepherd. He has a a desire to be restored. He has a desire to be gathered back in. then that means that the shepherd knows there's hope that David can be restored back in fellowship with God. Not only does the shepherd have hope, but David as a sheep has hope because he still has a desire to hear the voice of the shepherd. He still has a desire to know the shepherd. Come on, give God some praise in the house. He's crying out to God. He said, I've gone astray like a lost sheep. He's seeking restoration. What to do? 
when you go astray. Go astray. What do you, how do you get back to God? Amen. Amen. I've gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. He said, I haven't forgotten the voice. I still have a desire for the voice of the shepherd. I haven't been, I've just recently gone astray. It hasn't been too long. I still got that desire to hear his voice. And I still recognize the voice of the shepherd. I desire the authority of the shepherd in my life. I desire, praise God, the security of the shepherd in my life. And so he's coming to God and he's crying out, God, I need to be saved. I need to be delivered, God. I've gone astray, God. Put me back on the right path, God. Hallelujah. And brothers, brothers and sisters, because David hasn't gone too far too long, David knows, and the shepherd, not only David, but the shepherd knows that the odds are in the sheep's favor. That the odds are in the shepherd's favor. That that sheep that's gone astray, that needs deliver from demonic powers, deliverance from sin, deliverance from themselves. There's hope that that person can be saved. The shepherd's got hope. The sheep know I still love his voice. I still have a desire to walk with him. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Woo. And so because of that, David is literally saying, and I want you to understand. For I do not forget thy commandments. Not only do I have a desire for God, but I still want to hear his voice. And so David understands. So he's coming to the presence of God. He doesn't feel worthy. He's gone astray. The Bible says he's honest. He said, I've gone astray, but it's recent. He said, I need deliverance. I need salvation. And he's standing there and he's worshiping God. And he's drawing near to God with all that he's got inside of him. With his voice lifted up, crying out to God. Wanting to draw near to this awesome God. And so these verses are placed where they are to show you how important it is as sheep. To understand how we get back to the olive, how we get back to God, is through the blood of Jesus Christ. We must still have desire in our hearts for God. Praise the Lord. We go by way of the finished work of Jesus Christ. We're looking for a place called truth where there is no lie. No premature death. And ultimately in the world to come, say praise God, church. Praise God. So David is crying out for this salvation that only God can give, this truth that only God can give. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, there's a place called truth and you're sitting in it right now. But ultimately, it's that final destination that we're heading to in the world to come. Yes, hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, we're coming into a full cycle here. Yes, sir. We've come to the top. We find out wow. how to get back to God. Wow. And now we're coming and we're standing in the presence of God. Right, and I'm sharing this with you tonight, brothers and sisters, because it's important that there are times in your life and my life that we go astray. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. But don't go too far yes, and sir. too long. Yes, sir. Right. Don't start loving your freedom too much. Yes, oh, come on. Would you stand in the presence of God right now? Hallelujah. By way of the blood, by way of the cross of Jesus Christ. Lord, we desire the place called truth. We desire truth. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Do you still hear his voice tonight? Can you hear the voice of God tonight? When he calls you by name. Yes, Lord. In covenant with God, God has made a guarantee based on the finished work of Jesus Christ that we have a place in the world to come. Salvation is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, tonight. Think about it Sunday night. The way God moved Mephibosheth. We preached on Mephibosheth and we preached on the kindness of God. I was telling Prophetess Melvis there was not one person that wasn't seeking God in that service. Everybody in this service was seeking God. 
and recognize that we need God, that we need His kindness, we need His mercy, we need His salvation. He's the only one, only, only one that has total purity and perfection. I don't, He does. But I stand in Him, and you stand in Him, and I desire Him. I want to hear His voice. And so because of that, He says to you, as a wandering sheep, all we like sheep have gone astray. But God has placed upon Him the iniquity of us all. Let's stand. Let's lift our hands and praise to the Lord. You are a God of order. You are a God of organization. From the very first verse in the Bible, you showed us what your desire was. That you would save us, you redeem us, that we might be marked as your people, mighty King. Cleanse us with that precious blood of every evil thought, every evil word, and every evil action, God. Fill us with your spirit, O God. Renew us. Restore us. Woo. Heal you, Lord. Gather your sheep in your arms, Lord. Carry us, O God, to the finish line. Bear us up, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, God, tonight. That you're our shepherd, our God, our King, our Redeemer. Brought back into your presence, Father. We feel your presence tonight, Lord, in this place. Mighty God, King of kings, Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, today, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You're showing us the way back to God. Lord, even before there was ever a fall in the garden, you placed in the first verse of the Bible what you're going to do. We thank you for this Hebrew alphabet that we have studied, that we have taught, we have learned, we listened to. We've heard your word, we've heard your voice as our shepherd. We receive that word tonight. Thank you for its ability to transform us, to change us. And everybody said amen. And amen. God bless you. That's the Hebrew alphabet. Pray it's been a blessing to you. It has been a blessing and an honor for me to preach it. There's nobody like Jesus. That's Psalm 119, 22 sections of eight verses, beginning with Olive all the way through Tav, teaches us how to draw near to God and how to walk with God in this world so that we could have eternal life in the world to come. Pray you're blessed in Jesus' name. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Thank you for being in the house of God.